Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a monoblack Jadar Brawl deck featuring the 2-mana 1-1 one, one legendary human wizard from Innistrad Midnight Hunt, saying at the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures with Decayed, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed, and a Decayed zombie cannot block, and it will get sacrificed at the end of combat after it attacked. So there's a few ways we could build around Jadar. I did not go with Zombie Tribal, instead went with a more sacrifice-heavy build. So if we take a look at our creatures early on in the curve, we'll find plenty of creatures that we don't mind sacrificing to enable our synergies, and then higher up the curve we've got creatures that benefit from other creatures dying, and that can function as sacrifice engines. And then in the non-creature department we've got a bit of hand disruption, more removal that works well with sacrificing, and then also some additional card draw engines and ramp, and then finally some planeswalkers that also work well with the sacrifice theme. So let's quickly go over the entire list, starting with Ecstatic Awakener, a 1-1 that can pay 3 mana, sacrifice another creature to draw a card, and transform into a 4-4. So the perfect curve here is turn 1 Awakener, turn 2 play Jadar, make a zombie token, turn 3 we can even attack with our decayed zombie, deal 2 damage, and before the decayed trigger resolves, we have to be in full control for this to work, we can pay the 3 mana to Awakener to transform it and sacrifice our zombie. Then we've got Serrated Scorpion, a 1-2 that when it dies deals 2 damage to the opponent and we gain 2 life. Shambling Gas, another creature we don't mind sacrificing, either making a treasure token or giving a creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn. Then at 2 mana we've got Yarox Fen Lurker, a 1-1 one, one that when it enters makes the opponent exile a card from their hand, can also pay 3 mana to give it plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Undead Augur works very well with our zombie token as a 2-2 zombie wizard, saying whenever the Augur or another zombie we control dies, we draw a card and lose one life. Skyclave Shade can come back from the graveyard thanks to Landfall, so another creature we can sacrifice over and over again. Speaking of which, Reassembling Skeleton is a 1-1 that can pay 2 mana to return from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, so we can keep sacrificing it. And Priest of Forgotten Gods is a great combo with all these creatures that keep coming back, as a 1-2 that can tap, sacrifice two other creatures, then the opponent loses two life, has to sacrifice their own creature, we add double black to our mana pool and draw card, so that can potentially pay for the Reassembling Skeleton or Skyclave Shade. Then we've got Novice Occultist from Midnight Hunt, a 1-2 that when it dies it draws a card and we lose one life. Lazotep Reaver is a 1-2 that when it enters a battlefield amasses one, so we get to make a 1-1 zombie army token, more sacrifice fodder. Elder Fang Disciple, a 1-1 that when it enters makes the opponent discard a card. Doomed to Dissenter, a 1-1 that when it dies makes a 2-2 zombie token. Discordant Piper, a 2-1 that when it dies makes an 0-1 goat token. Clattering Augur, a 1-1 that cannot block, when it enters we draw a card and lose one life, and for 4 mana we can return it from our graveyard to our hand. Carrier Thrall, a 2-1 that when it dies makes a 1-1 Scion token that we can sacrifice to add 1 mana. Burglar Rat, a 1-1 that makes the opponent discard a card. Blood Artist, saying whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life and we gain one life, so it can passively drain the opponent as we sacrifice more creatures. Black Cats is a 1-1 one, one that when it dies makes the opponent to discard a card at random. Acquisitions Expert, another 1-2 that makes the opponent discard a card. And then Scrap Heap Scrounger, a 3-2, cannot block and for 2 mana we can exile another creature from our graveyard to return it from our graveyard to the battlefield. So plenty of creatures we don't mind sacrificing. Then at 3 mana we've got Liliana's Devotee, a 2-3 giving zombies we control plus 1 plus 0. And at the beginning of our end step, if a creature died this turn we can pay 1 on a black, and if we do create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So works very well with the Decade token, not only giving it plus 1 plus 0, but it's also a great way to enable the second ability. Then Midnight Reaper's a 3-2 Zombie Knight, saying whenever a non-token creature we control dies it deals 1 damage to us and we draw a card. So it doesn't draw a card with the Decayed Zombie, since it says non-token, but there's still plenty of other non-token creatures that can die to draw us a card. Then we've got a Morbid Opportunist from Midnight Hunt, a 1-3 saying whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card. This only triggers once each turn, so this does work with the Decayed Zombie tokens. Playcrafter, a 3-2, that when it enters makes each player sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, and if the opponent can't, we make them discard a card instead. 
Then we've got Wostrider, a 3-2 that when it enters makes an 0-1 GOAT token, and we can sacrifice another creature at any point to scry one, so this is a free sacrifice outlet that can potentially enable some death synergies. And then we can also escape Strider from our graveyard by exiling four other cards and paying five mana, in which case it escapes with two plus one plus one counters on it. Then we've got Yaheni as another free sacrifice outlet, can sacrifice another creature to make Yaheni indestructible until end of turn, otherwise a 2-2 with haste, saying whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we put a plus one plus one counter on Yaheni. And then Ayara, a 2-3, that when it enters or another black creature enters battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life, and we can tap Ayara and sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. Then at 4 mana we've got Solemn Simulacrum, We'll Harampus by searching up a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped, and when it dies we draw a card. We've got Yogmoth as a 2-4 with protection from humans, we can pay one life, sacrifice another creature to put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature, and we also get to draw a card. And for double black we can discard a card to proliferate, which will potentially put more minus one minus one counters on opposing creatures. We've got Ravenous Chupacabra, just a 2-2 creature that when it enters destroys target creature an opponent controls. Rankle, a 3-3 flying haste, that when it deals damage to the opponent, we get to choose a bunch of different modes between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, or each player sacrifices a creature which has great synergy in our deck. Then Nightmare Shepherd is a 4-4 enchantment creature with flying, and whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we may exile it and return it to the battlefield in the form of a 1-1 demon token, so great at recycling any enter the battlefield abilities. Gaunty Lord of Luxury is a 2-3 with Death Touch, and when it enters we can look at the top 4 cards of the opponent's library, exile one of them face down, and we get to cast that card, ignoring color requirements. Demon of Catastrophes is a 6-6 flyer with Trample, but as an additional cost to cast we need to sacrifice a creature, which should not be a problem. Death Priest is a 2-2, giving skeletons, vampires and zombies we control plus one plus one, and at the beginning of our end step, if a creature died this turn, we can pay one mana, and if we do create a 1-1 black skeleton creature token, so very similar to Liliana's Devotee, and then Pitless Plunderer, a 1-4, saying whenever another creature we control dies, create a treasure token, so it can give us a huge mana advantage. And then we don't have an incredibly high curve, topping out at 5 here with our creatures, including the Boneyard Aberration, a 3-3, that when it dies we get to exile it, and then conjure 3 cards named Reassembling Skeleton into our graveyard, so it can give us lots of sacrifice fodder. Then we've got Massacre Girl, which can act as a sweeper, a 4-4 with menace, that when it enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn, and whenever a creature died this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one minus one until end of turn, so it can set off a chain reaction, and just starting out with Jadar and the 2-2 zombie token, we can quickly start wiping away three toughness creatures, and that will only scale up, often leaving Massacre Girl as the only creature in play. And then Cavalier of Night, a 4-5 with a lifelink. When it enters, we may sacrifice another creature, and if we do, destroy target creature and opponent controls. And when the Cavalier dies, we return a creature card with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then we also have Hostile, Hostile, a land that can pay mana and sacrifice a creature to put a soul counter on it. And then if it has three or more soul counters, we get to transform it into Creeping In, a 3-7 land that can phase out for four mana, protecting it from removal. And when it attacks, we can exile a creature card from our graveyard. And then the opponent loses X life and we gain X life for X is the number of creature cards exiled with Creeping In. Then taking a look at our non-creature cards, at 1 mana we've got Bloodchief's Thirst as a cheap removal spell, can also be kicked for 2 and a black, taking out larger creatures or planeswalkers. Then we've got a whole host of these 1 mana removal spells, that as an additional cost to cast requires us to sacrifice a creature, and then in the case of Bone Shards we can destroy a creature or planeswalker, Bone Splinters destroys a creature, Eaten Alive can exile a creature or planeswalker, We've got Mutual Destruction to destroy a creature, and Spark Harvest can destroy a creature or Planeswalker, and then some of these have additional alternate costs we can pay as well. Then we've got Dark Ritual to add Triple Black to our mana pool, so a great way to ramp into especially Planeswalkers. If we can play Planeswalker two turns ahead of schedule, that's going to be very hard for the opponent to deal with. We've got Fatal Push as more removal, can easily enable a revolt by sacrificing a creature. Then we've got Thought Seize, as well as Inquisition of Kozilek as 1 mana discard spells. Village Rites can sacrifice a creature to draw to. 
and then Warlock class, can passively deal damage whenever a creature dies in our turn, then can level it up to draw some cards, and eventually at level 3 can double our damage output. Then at 2 mana we've got a Deadly Dispute, similar to Village Rites, also makes a treasure token. Dreadhorde Invasion will keep amassing onto a zombie token, so especially if we keep sacrificing a 1-1 zombie army every turn, we can get maximum value out of the invasion, even if we never get a lifelink zombie. Then we've got Feed the Swarm, can destroy a creature or enchantment, so a very unique effect for black to have access to. And then Heartless Act and Power Word Kill, more 2-mana removal spells. Sign in Blood can draw 2 cards at the cost of 2 life, can also target the opponent to deal the last 2 points. Arcane Signet for a bit of ramp. And the Meat Hook Massacre is a sweeper in enchantment form which will stick around and passively drain the opponent, as well as Bastion of Remembrance, very similar to Blood Artist, and generates a 1-1 token in the process. Phyrexian Arena will draw us an extra card at the cost of one life every turn, and Heraldic Banner can ramp us while giving our black creatures one extra power. And then we've got two Planeswalkers to finish out the deck here. Spider Queen can generate some 2-1 spider tokens, can draw extra cards, and whenever a creature we control dies we can put additional loyalty on Spider Queen. And then Liliana draws an extra card whenever a creature we control dies, can generate zombie tokens or make each player sacrifice two creatures. And then the mana base includes Cabal Stronghold, if we get enough swamps in play can generate additional mana. We've got Castle Lochthwain, which can draw additional cards as well. Hive of the Eye Tyrant as a creature land. And Phyrexian Tower can generate extra mana if we're willing to sacrifice a creature. And then 30 basic swamps. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Trillasara Moondancer, so green-white life gain deck. Yeah, we've got a fine hand with two cheap removal spells, which are going to be quite important. Hopefully pick up land number three, otherwise I can still sign in blood to try and hit my third land. It's going to be a ranger class for now. Get my zombie token going. Could also play devotee, hit them for three. They could also be holding a way to protect their commander here. And both my removal spells are sorcery speed, so I wouldn't be able to kill Moondancer through an instant speed hexproof trick, for instance. So, yeah, for now I can Blood Chief's Thirsts maybe after attacking. Save my bone shards for later. And we'll see if they have a response. Yep, there's a snakeskin veil. And I'll draw two. Alright, so next turn... I can maybe play Chupacabra. Conclave Mentor. Alright, so maybe it's more of a plus one counter deck than really a life gain deck. And Conclave Mentor is certainly scary. So I can Boon Shards. And I think go for Mentor first over Moondancer. Or just play Chupacabra. It's just more mana efficient here. And hit for three. Might as well send Jadar. Next turn I can play Strider plus Bone Shards or Devotee plus Bone Shards. Fountain will start gaining life and so can the Legion's Landing. Not jumping just yet. Artist is nice, although still kind of lacking the Woe Strider, as it can help me jump while scrying towards more lands for Liliana. (laughs) 
and then I'll keep my go token and just sacrifice the zombie, killing Moon Dancer so they don't get to scry as much. And play Hive. Alright, and then we'll keep everyone back to play defense. And then if I find land number six, can Liliana minus four, which should be good. Wolf and one one attack. Fair enough. They've got another trick, perhaps. Alright, let's sank the goat first. Don't need a black cat. And I don't think I can sack anything else. Even though finding a land 6 for Liliana would be a big deal. Yeah, I guess I could sack the zombie. Alright, there we go. So Liliana will stabilize us even if we lose Jadar and only draw one card. Opponent stop decking, they can start leveling up Ranger class as well. Alright, so Fen Lurker can take their last card. Our souls will remain A Jani would have been good. Maybe go Devotee Awakener. And with a Liliana in play, we're happy to chum block with our creatures. Awakener next turn will draw two, essentially. Can escape both Strider as well. So I'm liking my position. This looks like a fun new toy. Can play Reassembling Skeleton and Blood Artists. Probably wanted to play my land so I could have attacked with Awakener first. That's alright. Missed out on a little bit of damage. Can still do this at instant speed. Alright, shall I off the top? That's a problem. So we'll have to, at the very least, minus four. Didn't think Moondancer has a good attack. Alright, I think that works, because now I can actually trade for Moondancer, which sets up the uh, transformation, and then next turn minus four deals with the rest. So, zombie. Sacrifice reassembling skeleton. They were allowed to serve anyway. So I'm happy I left the Awakener back now. And sure, we may lose Liliana here, but if that means dealing with Shalai, it's probably worth it. Fatal push could also work. If something leaves the battlefield, so I could escape Strider to make that happen. Sure.
draw a card and then scry. Do need burglar rants. And then now I can just keep plussing. Shalai was also preventing Blood Artist from dealing damage to the opponent, as Artist actually targets. So was targeting myself, which luckily didn't deal any damage, but also didn't allow me to gain any life. So we'll hit for three. And then end of turn I can make a zombie with Devotee. And then now the artist can gain me more life now that the opponent doesn't have Hexproof. Guardian Project is fine. Yeah, I think we're taking over now. Okay. Liliana can keep plussing. How about we sacrifice our aberration to mutual destruction? Don't have to make this play, because it's not like Duxus is a huge problem, but I think we can afford to and attack for a whole bunch, make more zombies, have four reassembling skeletons we can keep bringing back. And that's game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Florian, Foldaren, Sion deck. And yeah, we've got a Keeper. Dark Ritual could maybe set up an early Ayara or Yogmoth. They do appear to be a Vampire Synergy deck. Could just play a Shambling Ghast, which can still um, trade for Vampire of Dire Moon. And then keep Dark Ritual to ramp out Yogmoth. And then I can sack Shambling Gas to kill the Vampire of Dire Moon while drawing a card. And making a treasure as well. Alright, now we've got a Yogmoth in play, which is going to make it pretty challenging for the opponent to keep any creatures around. So I could play a Kick Blood Chief's Thirsts, or I can just develop my board a little bit more and let them keep Florian around. It's probably okay. And then, what do I like? Maybe just play Ayara? And then next turn, I can uh, maybe get Jodar and Acquisitions Expert in play. Alright, Florian a 4 4. Will hit us. And an adversary. Sure. Pitiless Plunderer could be exciting. But let's start with experts. Get to look at two cards. Since we control a cleric. And uh, Neonate's Rush gets to kill my Jadar, so we'll take that. And then I could sack Expert to Ayara to draw a card. See if I can hit a land. And then play Jadar. And I think we'll just pass it back. And drain the opponent some more. And I can sacrifice the zombie at instant speed with Yogmoth. Okay. So they could have some burn spells to finish off Yogmoth if I block. So I probably just shrink down Florian by sacking the zombie. And 
and then take five, I guess. Ember Cleave, that explains it. Going on the Adversary, I could sank both remaining creatures to finish that off. But I can just kill it with a Blood Chief's Thirst next turn, which seems better. And then Florian's ability doesn't matter since her opponent's tapped out. I guess he could still find a land. Alrighty, so a lot of options. Liliana's minus four also looking good. But I think we can go with a different path here as well. So maybe Pitiless Plunderer, Thirsty Adversary. Sure. And then just keep everything back. And now we're starting to generate mana whenever one of our creatures dies. So 4-4 four, four, double strike. So let's shrink that down. And then I could proliferate as well. Add another minus one counter. Yeah, sure. And maybe get rid of Death Priest since invasion's pretty good with both AR and Yogmoth. And then now I could attempt to block. Maybe block with everyone. And then I can still sack to Ayara or to Yogmoth if needed. Alright, so they're essentially killing Jadar and Ayara, but at that point I might as well sack Jadar and not lose Ayara. So that worked out. Interlopers fine. Yeah, the early Yogmoth just gonna run away with this game. So we've got about a million options here. Could go with a Spider Queen. Make a couple spiders. And maybe play Invasion. And yeah, here we can activate Ayara, can activate Yogmoth at instant speed, sacrifice the vampires if they try to equip the interloper, generate treasure with the plunder, which also allows me to use power word kill, and there's no coming back. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Facing old stick fingers, so black green graveyard deck. Got a lot of ramp actually between Signet and Simulacrum. So we might even get to the level 3 of Warlock class. Prioritize playing my swamps in case we find the Cabal Stronghold, which requires me to have more swamps in play. And uh, if I play Signet, I could play. Simulacrum next turn already. Might be worth it. Slow start from our opponents. They might have some removal in hand. And then we want to play a Henny once we already have a creature in play that we can sacrifice to protect her. Can play a triple two drop. 
maybe make the opponent discard some cards, or I could activate the Warlock class. Let's start by attacking. Definitely like the sequence of Disciple into Acquisitions Expert, as that will let me look at two cards with Expert. And I guess if I play Jadar, even a third card, as we'll have Rogue, Cleric, and Wizard. So, sure. Alright, they're gonna kill Jadar in response. That's fine. And a rise from the grave can go. Yahani's expertise, quite fitting when we have a Yahani in hand. Still get to draw a card. So they might have top decked it considering they killed Jadar, or I guess they wanted to protect expertise from being taken, so they had to cast a removal spell. But that's okay. And then now. Six, seven mana available. Kind of like level up Warlock class. See what we get. And I'm liking Opportunists. And then no way to trigger Opportunist this turn, but I'll be able to set it up next turn. So let's be mana efficient and then go Augur into Yaheni. Now our opponent does have a Hive of the Eye Tyrants, which can exile my Strider from the graveyard, so I can't escape it. But if that's their entire turn, I think we'll be fine. Could see old stick fingers. X equals four. Some pretty large creatures in the graveyard, so it's definitely a reanimator deck more than your typical blank green graveyard deck, which explains the opponent's deck construction. Okay. Sun tap. And then. Definitely want to have Opportunist in play. Could play Jadar. Sacrifice Augur so I can attack. And then next turn, the zombie with Opportunist can draw more cards. Liliana's great too. Can even help us deal with like an Ulamog that gets reanimated. Yahani is safe from Massacre Worm. Karn's gonna go digging for another reanimation spell. Uh, they can have a forest. Opponent keeps ramping. And yeah, we're applying a good amount of pressure. Opportunist is drawing us more cards. And Liliana's gonna be awesome here. So how about a Blood Artists and a Liliana? And our opponent packs it in, just too much damage coming their way. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Um, Augur, a good combo with Jadar, and then Banner with lots of cheap creatures facing a Jodzi blue-green ramp deck, presumably. So it could be a tough matchup. As our opponent's kind of gonna go over the top of what we're doing. But uh, we'll be able to deal a nice amount of damage. I'll draw a couple cards, hopefully finding more disruption Turn one Scorpion, and then turn two Jadar into potentially Undead Augur. That way we'll get to draw a card right away. Got 
Could also play Banner first, develop my mana. Which is certainly reasonable. But I think I want to draw cards. And then next turn Banner will be even more impactful with an extra creature that it's pumping up. If I draw a land, I can go Banner plus a 2-drop. Alright, Primal Amulet. So their opponent's not playing many creatures. Opponent already down to 10. Sadly, no lands, but that's alright. And next turn, Bone Shards could also sacrifice the Scorpion, which could help us close out the game. You happen on a Glade, not gonna do much here. So Primal Amulet, very scary once it transforms, especially with cards that let you take extra turns. Opponent might have some Fog Effects to prevent all damage. It's gonna be Journey, putting a whole bunch of lands in play. So a good combo with Treasure Hunt if that finds plenty of lands, which luckily for us it did not. So two mana left for a Thematic Compass, which transforms. Alright, so I can attack with a team. They can prevent three damage, but that still has them taking seven. So very close to dead, in fact, with Ayara here. We can deal the last point of damage. Deadly Dispute, Sacking Scorpion. And then Ayara deals one damage by herself. And we didn't even need the lands, but I guess I'll save my treasure. Alright, so our opponent was close to comboing off, so I'm glad we managed to apply a lot of early pressure thanks to our banner. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Sarkon from the latest jumpstart. So Dragon deck, and uh, I think my hand's keepable. Disciple into Experts, is a lot of discard early on. Could also play the Shade, which applies a little bit more pressure if we want to attack down their Planeswalker. Alright, Berserker is going to make that a little bit more difficult. So let's go with a discard plan instead. So not in a hurry to play Jadar since we don't have any amazing synergies with it at the moment. Put in discarding Ourobrask. So they could just suit up their Berserker here with Shadow Spear. But it's going to be an attack for two. Of course, Berserker good with... Additional dragons in play. Magda's good too. Can still double block Magda if they equip Shadow Spear at least. And our opponent's missing a third land. So we're gonna get to see two spells. Alright, Cathartic Pyre and Tormenting Voice will take Pyre. And pass it back. Need both blockers to potentially stop Magda. And hope they don't have a one mana removal spell. All right, that worked out. Demon is a great excuse to play Jadar. Or I could also sacrifice the Skyclave Shade and then still replay it, but I think Jadar plus Augur or just Jadar plus Shade and then sank the zombie token anyway. Still makes a lot of sense. Also have my Hive to maybe pressure Sarkon. 
Sacred Tormenting Voice to look for more lands. Take two. Is your opponent going with the Maze Mind Tome to scry into a land instead? So, can attack with Shade and Jadar and then sag the zombie to the demon and keep Shade in play. Seems fine. This will apply a lot of pressure. Alright, there's a lane finally. So they could play Sarkon, but it wouldn't be able to take out my demon. So they might go for a different plan. Berserker attacks. So Sarkon only deals three damage. So not sure what they're representing, maybe like a Thundering Rebuke or Lava Coil dealing four damage second main. I think that's still a fine exchange. Yeah, there's a lava coil. That works for me. Can keep up the pressure. And play Gonti. I guess we can play Gonti first. See if they want to use Maze Mind to my response. They don't. And Amber Cleave is looking reasonable. Yeah, why not? Could also go for Heraldic Banner, naming black, which might be even better. Get another zombie. Rekindling Phoenix to play. Play Banner. And then I could play a Bastion as well. Don't think I'm attacking with Gonti, but these two can attack. They can block my Shade if they want to. I guess they get the Phoenix back right away. Now let's just hit with the zombie token. What I want to set up is Hive of the Eye Tyrants, potentially exiling Rekindling Phoenix. If we can find another removal spell. So they can equip Phoenix and just keep it on defense. Tormenting Voice. Discarding Tome of Legends. Not the best combo with a Planeswalker commander. So let's Augur first. And then I might just attack with Hive past the Phoenix. Could also attack with Shade and then replay it. With Kicker even. Undead Augur. Alright, now we'll go with a different approach. And then Shade can attack, and I can still replay it second main.
All right. So don't hit my position. A sweeper could be quite backbreaking. Would love to draw a removal spell so we can get rid of this Phoenix for good. Any sort of card draw engine would be great, although the Undead Augur is already doing a reasonable job. So Maze Mind Tome gains the opponent for life, gets exiled. Opponent's holding four cards. We haven't seen Sarkon in action yet, although it doesn't look amazing on this board. Rebuke kills Augur, still draws a card. Alrighty. So getting close to the point where I can just attack with everyone, especially with the Hive as well. Yeah, let's go for it. Might be Shadow Spear that's holding priority. Send in the troops. Exiling. Don't think it matters too much. And there we go, Exaxes. So our opponent's early mana struggles ended up costing them. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Hamza, a guardian of Arashin, so plus one counter deck. My hand is good, not great, but I'll keep it. Got the devotee to synergize with Jadar. And feed the swarm as a bit of interaction. So I'll wait on the fen lurker. And then devotee allows me to hit for three. Next turn I could also decide to make a zombie and play a 2-drop, as opposed to playing Simulacrum. See the modular creature from our opponent, so if it dies they can move those counters onto another artifact creature. Now gains first strike thanks to the Bondkin. So probably killing the Bondkin over the prototype. And then we'll make the play I described. Don't expect any combo tricks. Starting to amass a zombie army. Although, funnily enough, no amass zombie, just a decayed and a regular one. Next turn, can keep making more zombie tokens, maybe play Fen Lurker. Hope they don't have a profitable block. The ooze can grow up to a 3 3, so not enough to stop my zombie tokens but it will eventually get large enough. So let's turn our zombies sideways. And then hope to draw some more action. Removal would be great in this matchup. Looks like we got rid of a Fierce Empath. 
Hamza joins the fun, so that can start blocking some of my zombies. Okay, Solemn and Dispute available. Could also tank with Fenlurker, which might sneak in a point of damage. Since I can technically pump it twice. Alright, so in this case, start by sacking my Decayed Zombie. Alright, nice. Can pump Fenlurker. And then we'll have a look. Okay, I see. So Great Henge could be problematic, although if I kill Hamza with Eaten Alive, then they wouldn't be able to cast it. And then I probably don't care too much about the rest. So take a Denizen perhaps. And then yeah, Henge is 9 minus 5 is 4. Don't want them casting Henge. So I'll have to lose a zombie here. And so next turn they could gain two with ooze up to eight. So they could maybe still survive an all-out attack, but our opponent packs it in. Alright, so we get to see our Jodar Brawl deck in action, getting to sacrifice lots of creatures. Our zombie tokens were relentless today, so overall satisfied with how it turned out. Maybe not the most competitive historic Brawl deck in existence, but after all the format's more about having fun. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Let me know in the comments which historic Brawl deck you would like to see covered next. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.